السلام عليكم our our seminar today is about the physiological anatomy of the kidneys and adrenal glands we will talk about the kidneys ureter and adrenal glands uh, we will start by the kidneys the kidneys are paired with peritoneal organs that lie at the level of T12 to all three vertebral bodies they lie obliquely with their upper pole more medial and more posterior than their lower pole the kidney measures Uh, 10 to 15 cm in length, the left being commonly 1.5 cm longer than the right. Their size is approximately that of a three and a half lumbar vertebra, and their associated disc on radiograph. On coronal cross section, uh, we will see that each kidney is seen to have outer cortex and inner middle. Extension of the cortex centrally as column of pertin, will separate the medulla into the pyramid, uh, whose abysses jutting into the calyces and are called the papillae. This is the papillae. Balbi calycial arrangement. There are usually seven pairs of minor calyces, each pair having anterior and posterior calyces. Also, there is wide, wide variation. Minor calyces, this is minor calyces, Pair combines to form two or three major calyces, which in turn drain via the infundibulum into the pelvis. This is the major calyces drained by the infundibulum into the pelvis. This arrangement is quite variable. A simple calyce has one papilla, indenting it, while a compound calyce has more than has more than one. Renal hilum. Right renal hilum lie at the level of L1, L2 vertebra while the left renal hilum at the level of L1 vertebra. Structure from anterior to posterior. The renal vein is the most anterior, then the renal artery, and lastly, the renal pelvis. The renal artery may branch early and a posterior arterial branch may enter the hilum posterior to the pelvis. Limb vessel and nerve also enter the hilum. Nephrons. The functional subunit of the kidney is called the nephrons and consists of renal corbicel, which consists of glomerulus and surrounding by a porous capsule. Uh, we also have bronze small convoluted tubule, loop of henal, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting duct. The collecting duct, as we see here, it empties into the calyces at the tip of the middle. The kidney has approximately 1 million nephrons. Relations of the kidneys. Both right and left kidney have the same relations anteriorly, which is the subraminal glands. And the anteriorly, the right kidney has relations with the liver, second part of the dendronum, colon, and the small intestine. While on the left, it has relation with the stomach, splenic flexure, pancreas, colon, and the small intestine. Posteriorly, we have the same relations on both the right and left side. Upper third, we have the diaphragm superiorly and then the 12th rib and costal diaphragmatic recess of the pleura. While the lower third, from medial to lateral, we have the psoas muscle, quadratus lumborum muscle, and transversus abdominus muscle. Blood supply of the kidney. The main renal artery. The renal artery normally arises from the abdominal aorta at the level of L1, L2 interspace. Each renal artery, as we said, lie anterior to the renal vein, uh, sorry, to the renal pelvis, and post posterior to the renal vein. The right renal artery is longer than the left, and it is passed behind the superior vena cava, uh, so sorry, the, uh, the IVC, and uh, has downward force, while the left renal vein arises at higher level than the, than the right and has more horizontal orientation. Accessory arteries occur in 20 to 25% of people. A lower bowl artery is the commonest and is bilateral in 15%. Intrarenal arterial anatomy. The main renal artery divided into segmental arteries near the hilum. The first div division is posterior segmental branch which supply the posterior and apical kidney. Then the main renal artery divided into four further branches, which, is, which are the apical, upper, lower, and middle, supplying the anterior surface, lower bowl, and variable portion of the apex.
the segmental artery then branch into lobar artery and the lobar artery branch into interlobular artery between the pyramid. And then the interlobular artery branches into the arcuate artery. And lastly, the arcuate artery branch into the interlobular arteries. This is renal artery. This is renal artery after your graph showing us, this is the renal, main renal artery. This is the segmental branch and this the interlobar branch and arcuate basal here. Typical segmental circulation of the, renal, uh, of the right kidney showing us, as we said, the first branch is the posterior segmental branch, which, are, uh, which pass posterior to the renal pelvis and supply the posterior and apical segment while other branches are apical, upper, middle, lower, which supply the anterior surface of the kidney and variable portion of the apex and lower surface. A vascular plane of a broadal. It is a section of the renal parenchyma that located between the anterior two thirds and the posterior one third of the kidney on a cross section. It is relatively avascular because it represents the plane where the anterior and posterior segmental artery branches meet. It located just posterior to the lateral convex border of the kidney and, and permit a relatively safe access route to the pelvicale cell system for nephrostomy insertion, as we see here. It is relatively safe. Venous advantage. Renal venule and branch renal veins freely communicate throughout the renal parenchyma, but finally drain only into the main renal vein. The left renal vein is longer than the right and it measures 6 to 10 cm, and it is coarse anteriorly between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta, and enter the medial aspect of the IVC. It has three tributaries, the left adrenal, the left gonadal vein, and the lumbar veins. The right renal vein is 2 to 4 cm in length, and has no tributaries. This is a a uh, transverse uh, section of the sound of the abdomen inferior to the, to the xiphoid process, showing as this is the left renal vein, and it's located between the superior mesenteric artery and the abdominal aorta. Renal vein variants and anomalies. Circumaortic left renal vein is the commonest left renal vein anomaly seen in 5 to 7 percent of individuals when the vein bifurcate into anterior and posterior division that encircle the aorta. Vitro aortic left renal vein, seen in 3% in, in, of individual. This is the left renal vein bus posterior to the aorta. The vein may, may have abnormal caudal force entering the iliac vein. Natic character syndrome. This is vascular compression disorder. When there is compression of the left renal vein between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta, can lead to the renal venous fiber tension and resulting in rupture of thin walled vein into the collecting system with resulting hematuria. It is slightly greater female predilection. This is the left renal vein axial CT showing us this is the left renal vein compressed between superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. Lymphatic advantage. Follow the arteries to para aortic lymph node, as we see here, to the celiac, hepatic, abdominal, common iliac, external, and internal iliac lymph node. Vitrobibitonium and facial spaces around the kidney. The vitrobibitonium is divided into three spaces perinephric space, anterior pararenal space, and posterior pararenal space. The perinephric space is the largest of these three divisions and is most easily identified. It contains the kidney and the renal vessel, adrenal gland, and collecting system and adequate amount of fat to allow identification on CT scanning. The space is surrounded by perinephric fascia and is continuity with the opposite perinephric space across the midline. Perinephric fascia consists. This is perinephric fascia consists of two layers, erotus fascia anteriorly and zucarcandal fascia posteriorly. These fascia layers are fused laterally at the lateral coronal fascia, which is continuous with the fascia transversalis. This image showing us, this is the uh, perinephric space. As we said, it contains the kidney, the renal gland, and the renal vessel, and adequate amount of fat. 
and is surrounded anteriorly by anterior renal fascia, gyratus fascia, and posteriorly by zucarcandal fascia. These two fascia fuse laterally as the lateral coronal fascia, which then fuse with the fascia transversalis. The anterior baronal space is lie anterior to the anterior renal uh, space, fascia, and behind the posterior peritoneum is continuous across the midline. It contains the pancreas, duodenum, ascending and descending colon. Superiorly, the space is limited when the anterior renal fascia blend with the posterior peritoneum, but inferiorly, the space is, is open into the pelvic extra, extra peritoneal spaces. This is the anterior baronial space, as we said, contains the duodenum, pancreas, ascending, descending colon, and is limited anteriorly by parietal peritoneum. Lastly, we have the posterior baronial space, which lies posterior to the posterior renal fascia and anterior to the muscle of the posterior abdominal wall. It is limited medially by the attachment of renal fascia to the psoas muscle, but it continues laterally with the extrabibitoneal fat tissue. This is extrabibitoneal fat tissue. Sorry. Uh, peritoneal fatty plane deep to the transversalis muscle uh, fascia. It contains only fat. The posterior uh, baronial space contains only fat. This is a gross sectional anatomy showing us the facial spaces around the kidney. As we see, as we said, this is the paranephric space, and this is the anterior perirenal space, and this is the posterior perirenal space. And this is sagittal section showing us that this is the perinephric space space, and this is the anterior baronial space, and this is the posterior baronial space. Development of the kidney. It developed from intermediate mesoderm on the dorsal wall of the colomic cavity between fifth and the twelfth week. It contains uh, from its three main components. Pronephrons involute com completely in the human, as we see here. Sorry. This is, uh, there is only a minute of pronephrons, while the mesonephrons give rise to the rheumatic pad, which then differentiated into collecting system, the urinal, uh, renal pelvis and ureter and the renal calyces. Metanophrons arises from the metanophrogenic blastema, which molds itself around the uh, developing uretic pad. The metanophrons will, will then differentiate it into the nephrons, glomerulus, bowman capsules, and collecting tubule. This is ventral view of abdominal pelvic region of the embryo and fetus between six and uh, ninth weeks, showing us the uh, kidney at first pelvic, then it ascend and medially rotated to uh, it is normal uh, normal side in the abdomen. When the kidney in the pelvis is supplied by branch from the iliac vessel, but in it is normal location is supplied by branch from the aorta. Congenital anomalies of the kidney. Pelvic kidney, this is IVU demonstrate right pelvic kidney. Pelvic kidney occurs secondary to failure of migration with incidence of one out of 900 to one out of 1,200. Cross diffused ectopia. IVU demonstrate left cross diffused ectopia due to fusion of the lower bowl of the left kidney, which is normal inside, and with the upper bowl of the ectopic right kidney. But not that each ureter is drained in, into it is normal side in the urinary bladder, the right to the right side and the left to the left. This kidney invariably has a vascular supply. Host short kidney, IVU and coronal maximum intensity projection CT urogram showing us this is a host short kidney. Not the lower bowl of both kidney cross the midline are fused. This is the hallmark of horseshoe kidney. The fused uh, tissue may be non-functioning fibrous tissue. Horseshoe kidney, this is also a coronal maximum intensity projection showing us the horseshoe kidney. Horseshoe kidney are prone to traumatic damage and are the commonest diffusion anomaly that associated with term and trisomy 18. Bifid renal pelvis. IVU demonstrate this is a bifid renal pelvis of the left kidney. Partial duplex. This is also IVU demonstrated partial duplex of the collecting system. 
complete duplex. RBW demonstrates a duplex left kidney with complete ureteric duplication. The ureter drains the upper moiety is entering the bladder as ureteral seal with typical cobra head appearance. Complete duplex system are more common with the ureter of the lower body inserting normally in its location in the bladder, and that it in the upper moiety have ectopic insertion distally in the bladder, urethra, or elsewhere. Uh, we will talk it ab ma uh, more about it more in the uric anomalies. Radiological features of the kidney. Length form of the abdomen. Pyrimenal fat often makes part or all of the renal outline visible. This is pyrimenal fat. Renal size is variable with normal range of 10 to 15 cm on radiograph or approximately two, three and a half vertebral bodies in height. Renal size is magnified by 15% on radiograph. The left kidney is usually larger, but, dif but a difference of more than two cm is abnormal. Intravenous urograph. After abosification by intravenous contrast, the renal parenchyma and, and outline can be assessed in the early or nephrogramic phase and the collecting system and uretic anatomy in the urographic phase. In the urographic phase, the calicial system can be seen. Minor and major calices are seen. These are connected to the pelvis of the kidney by the infantibular, which may be long or short. This is immediate film nephrogramic phase showing us the renal parenchyma and the renal outline. And this is urographic phase showing us the uh, the major and minor calluses, renal ultrasound exam in adult, the renal size is normally nine to 12 cm or the cortex is less ecogenic than the liver. Medullary pyramid are less ecogenic than the cortex. Cortical thickness is more is equal or more than six million. If the pyramid are difficult to differentiate from the cortex, then the parenchymal thickness can be measured, which is equal to 15 to 20 cm. Central renal sinus consists of uh, renal calyces, renal pelvis, and fat, and is more ecogenic than the renal cortex. Renal pelvis may appear as central slit of an echoic fluid at the hilum. Atrocinographic difference of a neonatal kidney from older children and adults. There is an increase for mechanical, uh, sorry, cortical ecogenicity, may be similar to the liver or spleen, and larger and more hyperechoic pyramid, and little or no renal sinus uh, fat, and fetal ovulation may be seen. Not that adult pattern is attained at six months of age. This is benign anatomical variant of the kidney showing us this is bromdary hump, siblinic hump, and this is hypertrophied column of pepsin, which should be not confused with renal mass. And this is also uh, showing uh, uh, ultrasound examination showing, showing us persistent fetal ovulation. Benign anatomical uh, variant also have, we have extramenal pelvis. This is referred to the presence of the renal pelvis outside the confine of the renal hilum. It is not anatomical variant and it is found in approximately 10% of the population. This is ultrasound examination showing as normal right kidney and the left kidney showing extra renal pelvis, which may appear as dilated, uh, suggesting obstructive pathology. But uh, subsequent uh, examination with CT clarify false interpretation on ultrasound and confirm that is extraminal pelvis. CT and MRI, the kidney are seen on a slice from T12 to L3 vertebral level. Posterior relation and anterior relation can be seen on axial CT, but are very well appreciated on sagittal and coronal MR image. The renal substance is homogeneous on an enhanced CT. On MRI, the interesting contrast between the cortex and, and medulla is seen on both T1 and T2 weighted image. On T1 weighted image, the renal cortex has a slightly higher signal intensity than the renal uh, medulla. On T2, the renal cortex has a slightly lower signal intensity than the medulla and intensive renal contrast is superior. 
on both CT and MRI, three phase of uh, enhancement can be appreciated. Arterial corticomedullary phase, where the cortex enhanced strongly, on contrast between the cortex and medulla is the greatest. And venous nephrogramic phase, where the contrast is homogeneous throughout the kidney. And delayed excretory phase, where the contrast is seen in the collecting system. This is the axial section uh, of the abdomen at the level of the kidney. This is before the IVU injection, showing uh, as homogeneous in uh, homogeneous uh, uh, parenchyma. Uh, and uh, this is uh, after uh, about uh, 40 seconds after injection of the IV contrast media, showing as enhancement of the amino cortex. This is corticomedullary phase. And after about 10 minutes, we have homogeneous enhancement of the renal parenchyma with this enhancement of the collecting system. And also we see there is enhancement of the renal ureter after 10 minutes. Arteriography of the kidney. Direct arteriography allow assessment of the vasculum and other lesion of the kidney, but is primarily used to facilitate interventional procedures such as renal angioplasty or stent placement. This is the arteriography of the kidney showing us the main renal artery, and this is the segmental artery. This is the interlobar artery, and this is the arcuate vessel. Our second subject is about the ureters. Uh, it is retroperitoneal and extraperitoneal structure, measure 25 to 30 cm in length with a diameter of approximately 3 mm. Has three functional narrowing region at the belpyuretric junction and vesicoyuretric junction and at the pelvic ramp. The uter enter the pelvis at the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. Anterior to the sacroiliac joint, it then lies on the lateral wall of the pelvis in front of the internal iliac vessel to point just anterior to the ischial spine when in turn forward and medially to enter the bladder. In female, the ureter lie close to the lateral fornix of the vagina. This is the ureter and this is the lateral fornix of the vagina. It lies close to it and about two and a half cm lateral to the uh, uh, mina, uh, sorry, lateral to the cervix, this is the cervix. It passes under the uretic artery in the base of the broad ligament. In the male, the ureter enter, uh, pass above the seminal vesicle, it passes above the seminal vesicle and is grossed by the vas difference. This is the vas difference. The intravesical portion of the ureter has an oblique course of 2 cm through the bladder wall and the vesical muscle has phenectric action while the oblique DT has a valve-like action. Relation. Posteriorly, we see here, this is the psoas muscle and common iliac vessel, unit of humeral nerve and sacroiliac joint, and the tip of the transverse process from L2 to L5 lumbar vertebra. Anteriorly, on the right, it has relation with the duodenum. Uh, right gonadal vessel, right colic vessel, and iliocolic vessel. And on the left, also, we have relation with the left gonadal vessel and left colic vessel, and with sigmoid uh, colon and mesocolon. Blood supply of the ureter. The ureter has variable blood supply. The upper ureter supply by branch from the renal artery, and the mid ureter branch from the abdominal aorta, and the lower ureter by branch from the superior and inferior vesicle. Uh, artery and ureteric artery and middle rectal arteries. Venous, venous drainage is highly variable and not defined. Lymphatic drainage, abdominal uh, ureter drain to the aortic cable and common iliac node, while the pelvic ureter drain to the internal and external iliac nodes. Developmental abnormalities and variants. Duplication occur in about 4% of subjects. It is the commonest significant congenital anomalies of the urinary tract duplication, two to three times commoner in female. When complete duplication occurs, the ureter drains the upper moiety drain blue calyces and insert it distally into the bladder than that draining the lower moiety. The lower insertion may extend to the bladder, neck, urethra, and in female may extend to the vestibule or the vagina. This is the complete duplication. Anomalies bilateral. 
and as we said, they were draining the upper moiety and certain distal and associated with the hydro time and urethroceal. The urethroceal is dilatation of intramural portion of the urethral due to narrowing of it is orifice. It is more common in duplication system when the urethral is draining the upper moiety inserting uh, an ectopic site. This is urethroceal. Radiological feature of the urethral. Length film of the abdomen. The urethral is not visible, but knowledge of it is coarse in relation to the skeleton is necessary when looking for radio effect carefully. The urethral bus anterior to the tips of the transverse process of L1 to L5, then anterior to the sacroiliac joint, and then lateral to the ischial spine, and lastly, medially to drain into the urinary bladder. Intravenous urography. The urethral are either completely or partly visible when filled with contrast. Brown abuse aid urethric filling. Distension of the upper part of the collecting system can be aided by applying a compression band across the abdomen. Ultrasound. The proximal and distal urethral may be visible on ultrasound when well distended. Intestinal gas obscure the mid portion unless it is abnormally dilated. This is ultrasound examination showing as dilatation of valvicalicial system and upper ureter and also the distal ureter due to stone of the, uh, the vesicoureteric junction. CT, ureteric cal uh, calculi not visible on radiograph are really visible on CT scan and non-contrast CT has largely replaced the IBU for diagnosis of the ureteric calculi. The normal ureter can be identified on the non-contrast scan also, it is easier to identify if contained contrast medium. This is axial CT showing as this is the normal orbital. This is coronal reformatted maximum intensity projection urogram demonstrate with a cable ureter. This is rare congenital anomalies. Uh, the axial image from stone protocol showing us this is the left ureteric stone. Uh, a static uh, fluid MR urography by using heavily titrated sequence similar to MRCB. However, because the urethral um, intermittently collapsed due to parastasis, part of your time may not, not be distended with urn and thus uh, not image using this technique, but it's very useful in obstructed fluid fault system. This is static fluid MR technique. MR contrast urography can be performed when the ureter are imaged during the secretory phase after intravenous gadolinium and is aided by concurrent administration of the aortic. Lastly, we'll talk about the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are paired with a peritoneal gland that's located superior medially to the kidney within the vivinific space but outside the renal capsule. Each gland is composed of body and medial and lateral limbs. The adrenal do not develop with the kidney. They develop in the vitro peritoneum and descend, while the kidney develop in the pelvis and then ascend. In case when the kidney fail to ascend, normally the adrenal gland are still found in its normal expected position. Also, their shape may be more discoid owing to the lack of the molding by the kidney. Right adrenal gland, it is more constant in location than the left adrenal gland. The right adrenal gland lies posterior to the IVC and medial to the right loop of the liver and lateral to the right diaphragmatic cross, while the left adrenal gland lies posterior to the sublenic vein and lateral to the diaphragmatic cross. Left diaphragmatic cross. On cross section, it is linear, uh, the right adrenal gland linear or V-shaped with larger medial limb than, uh, that, than the lateral limb, while the left adrenal gland on a growth section appear as a triangular or Y-shape. Blood supply. Superior adrenal artery is a branch from the inferior phrenic artery, while the middle adrenal artery is a branch from the abdominal aorta. And the inferior adrenal artery is a branch from the renal artery. Single vein vein each gland. The right renal vein, it's shorter. Uh, 
uh, sorry, the right adrenal vein is shorter and drain directly into the IBC, while the left adrenal vein is longer and drain into the uh, left uh, renal vein and then drain into the IBC. It may be joined by the inferior phrenic vein, as we see here. The geological feature of the adrenal glands. Play from of the abdomen. The adrenal glands are visible only if it's calcified, and they are seen to be lateral to the spine at the level of the upper bowl of the kidneys. This is uh, a blame form of the abdomen sh showing bilateral triangular foci of calcification near the adrenal lodge, compatible with bi bilateral adrenal calcification. This patient has vast medical history of adrenal hemorrhage. Ultrasound in the thin, in the, in thin individual. The adrenal gland can sometimes be seen between the kidneys and the liver on the right and between the kidneys and pancreatic cell on the left using high resolution CT. They are uh, readily seen in neonate and usually seen in children. This is ultrasound showing a normal adrenal gland in infant. As we say, it is readily seen in, in infant. The shape of adrenal gland on CT cat is variable linear or inverted V-shape on the right side and triangular on V-shape on the left. Craniocaudal extent is less than 4 cm while limb thickness is less than 1 cm. This is the axial CT scan showing us this is the right and this is the left adrenal gland. This is the coronal CT showing us the right and the left adrenal gland. MRI. The adrenal are very well seen on MRI because of the surrounding fat, more easily seen uh, than with CT. They are also slightly hypointense compar uh, compared to the liver on both T1 and T2 weighted image. This is axial section MRI showing us this is the right adrenal gland, and this is sagittal sec section showing us the left, uh, sorry, showing us the adrenal gland. And thank you. Name يلا the study. Renin, Renin. Renin. Name the study. Uh, it is an IVU study. Uh, L A left ureter. Left ureter. Okay, I should. Noura Mohammed Jawad B. Name the study. B who left renal pelvis. Excellent. Rokia. C. نعم أستاذ ال C urinary bladder. okay زهراء D. ما شاء الله. right lower right lower pole major calyx. هذا major calyx excellent. أخير واحد خنساء عبد D. نعم. right sacroiliac joint. excellent okay سعد محمد يكمل. هو راح يخلص يمكن راح يقطع هذا الميتين انتهى تقريبا.